Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I was working with Topaz Labs Photo AI and I ran into a problem. In today's video, I'm going to show you what that problem is and what you could do to work around it. Specifically, I'm talking about lens corrections on mirrorless cameras. You probably already know that lens corrections are built into the RAW file or included in the RAW file when you shoot with most mirrorless cameras today. For example, I have this image take with a Nikon Z7 II and a Nikon 24-200 f4 f6.3 lens. And if I open up the lens corrections tab, you can see that at the bottom it says the built-in lens profile applied. And even with checking this, it doesn't matter and it just says built-in. So you can see the image isn't changing at all because that built-in lens profile was applied. Similarly, I have an image over here was taken with a Sony a7R4, which of course is a mirrorless camera. And on this camera, I used a Sigma 24-7 f2.8 art lens. And you can see, again, it says built-in lens profile applied. But in this case, it's showing us exactly what lens was used. And if I click off and on this enable profile corrections, you could see how it's affecting the image. The problem you're going to encounter is with the former, that is with this Nikon image where it just says built in. When I send this over to Photo AI, the way Topaz Labs recommends I send an image to Photo AI, and when it comes back into Lightroom, that lens profile is lost and there's no way to reapply it. Let me demonstrate. Now, the way Topaz Labs recommends one send an image from Lightroom to Photo AI is you go up to File, down to Plugin Extras, and then over and down to Process with Topaz Photo AI. The reason why they recommend you do it this way is because you're preserving the raw format throughout the workflow. So the image that is over here right now is a DNG file, which of course is a raw file. So just did its thing. It's yeah, I'm not going to do anything special here. I'll let it do it. You can see in the lower left-hand corner, there's a progress bar. It's removing the noise, doing sharpening, whatever it needs to do. It did it. All right. So let's just go with that. And I'm going to save to Adobe Lightroom. Now it's going to take a moment to save. Just let me mention very quickly too, probably in most cases, this isn't going to matter. I don't think many of us could actually recognize by glancing at an image that the lens profile has been applied or it hasn't been applied because most often the adjustment is very subtle. There's very rare instances, maybe when you're using something extremely, extremely wide or a big long telephoto where you'll ex experience severe pin cushioning or severe um, uh, barrel uh, distortion where it needs to be corrected because it just looks bad. Um, more often though, you'll get vignetting on a cheaper lens. So you'll have this vignette and that is part of lens corrections where it gets rid of that vignette. Okay, here's our image here. It doesn't show up, but let's go back to the original image. And again, this is the original RAW file. This is the image, if I zoom in, you see it has all the noise, all right? So this is the original RAW file. And again, it says enable profile corrections, built-in lens profile applied, blah, blah, blah. Go to this file. See how it like pin cushioned out a little bit? Here's that one. That's with the profile applied. Here's the one that was returned from Topaz Labs Photo AI. And look over here, it says unable to locate a matching profile automatically. Well, you could try to find it, but you're not going to find it. It won't be in Lightroom's database. Uh, Lightroom doesn't bother putting any lens corrections in for mirrorless camera lenses when that mirrorless camera contains the lens profile in it in the RAW file, if that made any sense. So you could try to find it. We could go to Nikon. And if I can find Nikon, there it is. And then we go to this drop down. You can see it just put in a AF S Nikkor 105 millimeter lens. That's an F lens. There's no Z lenses in here at all that I could see. So you're, you're just not going to find it. It's just not going to be there. So what you need to do is, um, well, reset this. Let's see if we undo that. Then what you need to do is go to the manual tab and this distortion slider. In the case of this image, because it's pin cushioned, we need to move this distortion slider to left and zoom out the middle a little bit. Then you could try to compare it to the previous, you know, the real raw file. 
and try to get it as close as possible. You could probably pull out your hair trying to get it exact. But just do the best you can. That's about as close as I could get it right there, manually doing it. So that is a workaround. Not the best workaround, but the workaround that I found. Now, where this doesn't come into play is images like this Sony file that was taken with a Sigma lens. In this case, uh, the lens corrections uh, are again built in, but the lens profile is showing up here. Instead of saying built in, it says the ex exact Sigma lens I used. So I'll send this one over there. And by the way, on that previous Sony RAW file, or the, I'm sorry, the previous Nikon RAW file, the only adjustments I did to it uh, happened to be in the detail tab. By default, it added some sharpening. I take that down to zero. And by default, it added some luminance noise reduction. I took that down to zero. By default, it added a little color noise reduction, or maybe I added it. I don't even remember. But anyway, that was at 10. Uh, other than that, I didn't do anything with that file before I sent it to uh, Photo AI. For this Sony file, again, nothing was done except the white balance was way off. So if I give you a before after, see how the white balance is way off. So I adjusted the white balance on this. And similarly, I went to the detail tab and took sharpening all the way down, noise reduction all the way down, and color noise reductions at 25. That's the default setting. I'll just leave that at that. So let's send this one over to Photo AI. We'll go to File, down to Plugin Extras, and over and down to Process with Topaz Photo AI. And again, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to try to optimize it and make it look the best possible. I just want to get in Photo AI, let it do its thing, and then let's get back to Lightroom. And I'll show you that the lens profile is applied. So I just want to make you aware of that if you're using a mirrorless lens combination where it just says built in and it doesn't give you the exact lens over there on the right, then you're going to probably have to manually correct the lens distortion uh, that was introduced by that lens because it won't be recognized or won't be able to find the lens profile. Uh, so let's let this do its thing. It's probably going to take a little while. So let's talk. So how's everyone doing? Everyone doing good? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Everything's good. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's happy. We're doing well. I hope you're as healthy and happy as my family is. And we're just about done here. We're going to head over to Lightroom. And then we'll take a look-see. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Of course, it's going extra slow at the moment. All right. All right, now we're in Lightroom. All right, there's the original RAW file. Again, I'll open up this a Lens Correction tab. And you can see that built-in lens profile applied. And I'll go to the image that was returned from photo ai click on that and you can see the file there the the lens correction is there so there's the original raw file here's the dng file you can see raw file the only thing different is the noise look at some blue specks in there it's kind of weird some little sharpening in here you can see but that's from whatever I did. I didn't do anything in Photo AI to try to optimize it to make sure it was doing the best job possible. I just left it on autopilot and brought it over. So I hope, hopefully that makes sense. And then we go back to that Nikon file and you can see it can't find it. All right. Also, there's something weird right in here with uh, the noise reduction that uh, Photo AI did. Again, I didn't optimize it at all. So just wanted to make you aware of that so that you're you know that could be an issue maybe um real estate photographer you're photographing rooms and you know your corners have to be perfectly square you may find that that's an issue thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it talk to you guys soon